Hello, Commanders! In game development, what you see is not usually what it is. In order to make a game, you have to rely on tricks and technical prowess to keep things consistent and comprehensible. For instance, sometimes developers imply that everything that deals damage is… a gun. But we'll get to that. In this video, we'll dive into the nitty-gritty of robot creation. Come on, join me. But be careful. This video can change the entire way you look at video games or get you equally excited about how they are made. Either way, after this video, nothing will be the same. Our robots might look like a solid construction. Their legs stomp the earth, their hull takes the bullets, and once a robot is destroyed, it tumbles down and shuts off. But is that really what happens? You think that robot legs are what lets it stay on the ground. In fact, it is an invisible capsule collider that slides over the floor. All robot movements are following the collider. Without the collider, robot wouldn't move. They would also fall through the ground, because robot models by themselves have no concept of collision at all. Or there is another thing. Did you know that over the whole war robot history, no bullets has ever hit any robot for real? Yes. Projectiles, in fact, interact with another invisible collider, which is usually spherical. If any enemy bullets hit this collider, then the robot receives damage. And finally, here is what happens when the robot goes down. A destroyed robot just disappears and immediately gets replaced with a shadow clone, uh, I mean with a decoy. It looks like a robot, but instead of hundreds of building components, a decoy just uses a couple of colliders which allow it not to fall through the ground. Switching a destroyed robot for a simplified decoy saves lots of your device's resources. This polygon is a place where we create our robots and weapons. We got everything we need here. Here we have pedestals with enemy robot dummies. One of them is nice and stand still. Another is a rather aggressive with four weapons dealing different type of damage. Each of these dummies is basically immortal. Once you destroy one, another will take its place. Near this invisible wall, we have our only ally on the polygon. Unfortunately, he has no weapons to fight back, so he keeps getting killed. He is not here because we like to see him suffer. This robot always comes back to life, so we could test support mechanics like shields or repairs. The meter, for instance, can target this ally and teleport to him. We got these lovely slopes to test how our robots deal with obstacles. If a robot can get on the first slopes, it has movement issues that we need to fix. If it manages to climb the last one, then it is way too maneuverable for a real match. This eager constantly moves around the calibration mounts. It comes in super useful when we need to test anything that is affected by enemy movement. Sometimes we need to test our weapons on something that has shields. So here we have shielded robots. On Polygon's floor we have markup that help us test movement abilities. Every robot that can jump, dash or fly goes through multiple movement tests here. On the Polygon we follow one key rule. There are no rules. We can put any weapon or module on any robot. Shoots without a weapon? Sure. Jumping Carter with one light weapon? Why not? All these tools help us prototype and test new robots fast and safely. And no one gets hurt! Building a robot for the game app is half of it. We also have to build it on the server so it could work in a multiplayer match. A significant part of that is huge scary spreadsheets where we put all robot parameters. Levels, durability, movement speed, cooldowns, ability damage, names, descriptions and whatnot. Some of the robot features actually only exist on the server. That's why we can often make tweaks and fixes without making you download an update. Everything that deals damage in war robots is technically a gun. Even if the robot's ability doesn't involve shooting, it's still coded as a weapon to keep things consistent on the backhand. For example, Hellburner had three invisible built-in guns. One goes off whenever the ability is used. It shoots with an explosion and damages surrounding enemies. Another weapon triggers once Hellburner is destroyed. It has the same effect with different damage. And finally, there was a weapon that shot Hellburner itself whenever the first one went off. 
so the explosion damaged not only enemies, but the Hellburner as well. We disabled that one not so long ago, though. Another notable example would be the abilities of Mender and other area support bots. They have built-in weapons that set off explosions, but deal a special damage type that affects only allies, effectively repairing them instead. On the other hand, weapons on Hawk, Jaeger or, say, Hades are physical objects. They have their own visible models uh, that are connected to robots. That allows us to use these weapons to create weird skirmishes, like the one where you could play Behemoth with four Hawk weapons. And that's it for now! What topics you'd like us to cover next? Let us know in the comments and check out other DevTales videos. You can find the links in the description. See you on the battlefield, commanders!